Well, New York Liberty fans, I mean, I am sure that game two is one that we would like to soon forget. But before we forget and get ready for Sunday, we have to break it down because there are definitely some things that the New York Liberty need to change if they have any hope of winning game three at Barclays. We're going to talk about it on this episode of Gotta Get Up. Gotta get up, gotta get up. Hey, women's basketball fans, welcome to Gotta Get Up, a podcast for New York Liberty fans brought to you by Black Rosie Media and hosted by Erica L. Ayala. I mean, we got to change the intro because y'all, y'all be on here as much as me. So, <laughs> ah, but we are here once again with Misha Jones. Listen, you know, we said what we said um, about Kia Stokes, former New York Liberty player. I mean, I let me be explicitly clear. I said what I said <laughs> about Kia Stokes, and it was first shot out the gate, and I was like, "Ooh, that's tough. That's tough." Um, and I mean, just an absolute thumping. The New York Liberty didn't even break eighty. We talked about that. The the Aces get the win in dominant fashion um misha what were your thoughts just coming off of this game immediately um i know this is a podcast for new york liberty fans i have to be very honest though liberty got the brakes beat off of them they got the brakes beat off of them collectively and individually which is almost like worse frankly um and it was surprising because I, I told you, my head was telling me that this would be an aces, all aces kind of series, but my heart was telling me that, you know, maybe maybe the Liberty will give a fight that nobody else expects them to get. Actually, let me not say nobody else, because I think there are a lot of people who thought that this was going to go a lot differently. Um, and yeah, it was just... <laughs> No, I'm not pointing fingers at you, but me too. You know what I mean? Because I think there's a certain amount of um, that that killer mentality, that that intrinsic factor that you think the best players are going to bring out in the finals. But right now, it's it's not even that it doesn't seem like the Liberty want to try. It's just hard to see them fighting because the Aces are so good. The Aces are genuinely a historic caliber team. This is correct. They're going to go down in the history books for their offensive efficiency, the all sorts of defense. I'm not a stat head, but all them different ratings and whatnot, they're they're up there. They're up there. So yeah. I mean, both there multiple things can be true at the yeah. same time. This is a, a, a as you said, historic aces team. I have always seen that. Um, I love that they're led by a former New York Liberty guard who went undrafted and had to scrap and fight for minutes for the New York Liberty. I will always hold it down for Becky Hammond. Um, I would love to watch her career in basketball just generally. Mm -hmm. um, and we were talking about this a little bit offline. I feel the same way about Sandy Brondello, her path as a former player, sticking it out as an assistant coach and having so much, um, consistency as a former player. Yeah. I just, I want to say that again, because honestly, I'm realizing that I sometimes take advantage of how long we've had Sandy Brondello in the league. Yeah. Because She's been around are, for a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are multiple former players who have been coaches that for one reason or another are not still coaching in the league. Mm -hmm. And a lot of time, and I've, I've written about this over the years, a lot of times if you ask those players, especially the black women, they feel because there hasn't been an on-ramp. Now, Sandy Brondello, it ain't been no crystal stare. Like if you look up, especially in those San Antonio days, things got a little dicey. Yeah. We, we're not going to get into that all, but I have so many thoughts, but one question that I definitely have about coaching as we get ready for game three, and given that, as you said, the Liberty, rightfully so, you said they got the brakes beaten off of them. Misha, I have really been thinking about coaching decisions, decision-making, uh, rotations, because obviously something has to change for the New York Liberty, and something did change for the Las Vegas Aces because they weren't meeting this level of success against the New York Liberty in the regular season. 
Um, and they, as you said, are going to be his, a historic team because they've even surpassed what they did. Mm-hmm. Peak yeah, literally. Of, of the regular season. Yeah, yeah. So when you look at the coaching matchup, what questions do you have um, from the Liberty side of things? And what do you think has been effective from the ACES side of things? So as far as questions, these are things we've we've talked about, whether on here or on Twitter. Um, and I would like to start by bringing up what you mentioned uh, on Twitter yesterday. Mark Schindler and I, shout out Mark, my guy. Um, we were talking about, or he was talking about uh, playing Sloot and what to do with Sloot and Sloot versus Marine or Marine. How do you put her in the lineup? How do you, you know, capitalize? Because game one, obviously we know about the first half she had, the 14 points, the four or five from three. But yep. she came in in game two as well and had an immediate impact. It might not have been the same amount of points, right. um, but, you know, there was a momentum shift. There was an energy shift. There was a spark yep. there. Um, and you said, you know, KT and Marine should find their way into this into this lineup more often. I tend to agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, and I think that, you know, with Courtney Vandersloot, that's my first question with, with Sandy Brandello. It's like, how, how are you going to play it? Because she's a vet, and I don't, I don't see a world in which if Sandy goes to Sloot and says, hey, if you can't get it going on offense, that's fine, but I'm going to need to make a, a starting lineup change or I'm going to drastically have to change the amount of minutes that you get in this game. I don't see her having an issue with that, but that's a real question that Sandy Brondello has to ask now um, with her. And frankly, I'm going to say it, you got to ask it with Sabrina too because she got completely neutralized. She got completely neutralized. If she does not have one of those – firework amazing oh my gosh she's hitting everything from the parking lot kind of games she's just she's what can you do with her you're attacking her on defense and she's a liability in all the minutes that she plays on the defensive end of the ball and then the aces are smothering her on offense so you have to either find ways to use her more sparingly move her around or change up the lineup altogether but those are two things that i would want to address immediately and so that's where i go to and we were talking about this a little bit i have i have a love and respect for Sandy Brondello, both coaches, as I've already uh, talked about, and, comma, and. I have always found the Phoenix Mercury to be one of probably maybe the most frustrating teams that I have ever personally covered in the WNBA because sometimes, especially on the back end of, of her years with them, they could look like absolute basura, <laughs> a.k.a. trash, <laughs> And not only crawl their way into the playoffs, but get to the finals. They figure it out, man. And that's Sandy Brondello. Yeah. When she says trust the process, I have to, I have to, because it don't always look good. <laughs> <laughs> and I've done this watching a Phoenix team mm-hmm. that she's coached for years. And now I'm watching a team that I grew up rooting for. With her as the coach, only her second year. And I feel in, again, that condensed microwave timeline, the anxiety <laughs> that I sometimes felt with Phoenix. And But I think what you said is correct. What I alluded to last episode, correct. And I, I agree with you. Sandy can have those conversations. And... I do believe that Sandy not only wants to, but genuinely trusts her players to figure things out. Mm -hmm. And, and I do think that she's gotten to the point where the leash is getting shorter. Mm -hmm. We saw the, from game one, I mentioned it the other day from game one, the New York Liberty went to their bench earlier with Marine game two. What did we see? Went to the bench also, early not as early and certainly not under the same circumstances yeah um but we saw we saw Steph Dolson earlier we definitely saw KT earlier and we saw the rotation a little bit more with KT and Marine coming in and out because you know who also saw their minutes change was Sabrina Inescu and Courtney Vandersloot and again that was absolutely by necessity so if we're talking about the coaching matchup you know as a as a <laughs> As a sofa GM, (laughs) it's not hard to deduce that maybe those came a little bit later than you want. Mm -hmm. And like we said, we can hold space for both things. 
I don't know anyone in the world who put money on the aces coming out that fast, that furious. I mean, 38 points in the brass, first quarter. Brass knuckle style mm. beat the crap out of the Liberty. I saw a lot of folks on Twitter um, kind of saying like, oh, I wish this had been a Vegas Washington series or I wish this had been a Vegas Connecticut or, you know, anybody else series. And I found myself, I sat back and I was like, would the Mystics have been able to, <laughs> what would the Mystics have done with a 38 point quarter? I'm really not sure because that, that's the thing about basketball and, and bringing it down to the very, very, very granular foundational, uh, you know, the basics of it. When you have the ball in your hands, the defense never knows what you're going to do. They can try to know. They can try to know. They can scout. They can watch film. They can do all that. But when the Aces are playing with the pace that the Aces play with, the Liberty don't even have a second to breathe. Not they even a second breathe. to breathe. Not they even breathe. a second to, to bend yeah. over and tie a shoe. No. Um, no. And so it's just it's, it's difficult when you have that kind of pace and the kind of talent. That individually, I talked about it on the last podcast. Individually, I think every player on the Aces is peaking. Right yes, now. correct, right. yeah. correct. And so that's not just a Becky Hammond thing, in my opinion. That's a whole staff. Yeah, it's that's been a- built for years now. It's been built. They talk about it on every broadcast. You know, they built. And this thing. let's talk about that because I'm of two minds now. <laughs> Y'all know I always bring up, this is like my long-standing joke. You know I'm going to bring up Tariqa Foster Brasby. And what have I been telling you? <laughs> Tariqa can't catch a break. <laughs> she won't. She won't. She won't. Um, <laughs> I've been saying that her comments early on, I found easy to disagree with because this team was not built the same way that the New York Liberty was not built the same way as the Aces. I've written about it, but just to recap. And I really want to lean into this part of it. Becky Hammond deserved to be coach of the year and arguably was top two, three this year. It was just a, I, I personally push for LT, but had Becky in my top three, but um, she deserves to be coach of the year, but let's not forget. And I feel like we've talked about this. I don't know, Misha, if you were on the show or not, but I know I've talked about this before on got to get up a podcast for New York, the Ritty fans brought to you by black Rosie media, Bill and beer, Yes, the keys. Y'all know I was very into the keys last episode. Yes, he gave the keys to Asia Wilson, who mentioned that in postgame, by the by. Anyway, um, he built the aces. Becky Hammond, and I, I've said this before. Again, I know I've said this piece before on the podcast. Becky Hammond was the perfect, perfect coach to take Bill's vision and execute where Bill Ambeer could not. Because, okay. And I also have said this for years, Bill Ambeer, and again, this is going to have to be an off-season episode because I have thoughts. <laughs> Bill Ambeer great, did a great job building the Aces in particular. Wasn't the right coach for the job. And there's proof. Mm-hmm. We have before Bill, after Bill. We have pre-Becky with Becky. Aces only got one championship. Yeah. And that's under Becky Hammond. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's it's a testament also to um all the folks behind the scenes. You know what I mean? Because yeah. when you I don't think people realize when you're really bad, like the Aces were not <laughs> the the San Antonio Silver Stars, the San Antonio Stars, it was rough. Okay. It that's was how they get rough. three three. Un, deux, trois, three consecutive number one picks. Yeah. Who does? Like, who's that only had her when you're three? really bad. <laughs> what? That's how bad, like, basement bad. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Is it too early to start throwing shades to teams that are eliminated? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> we got to wait till the finals end. We I feel like people can finals. deduce. I mean, maybe Indiana knows something about that. I said it. Oh. There we go. Oh. Uh. Wait. Yes, 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 yes. They were bad. To your point, Misha, they were bad. Very bad. Um, the New York Liberty, pretty, <laughs> pretty bad. Yeah, also pretty bad. <laughs> pretty bad, but that was while Sabrina Ionescu. Sabrina Ionescu played with the Liberty in the first season that they did not. 
play in Westchester after the acquisition um, by Joe and Clara Wusai. That was 2020, right? Mm -hmm. It's 2023. So they're three years removed from the worst basketball that New York has ever seen. Right. And in the WNBA finals against another team that had a really historically abysmal run. So here's here's what we talked about a lot last episode, Misha, was how much did the New York Liberty have the time to kind of go through that Tuckman's model of leadership development, right? And I think we kind of got our answer. Absolutely did. I think you were spot on. I think you're in the whole Tuckman's model. You was taking me to school for a second. I ain't <laughs> never heard of Tuckman's model before, but I think you were spot on. I think it, it's, it's so obvious that it's what we talk about it every time. New York lacks chemistry on offense. They haven't figured out what their offensive priority. I talked about this last podcast. You they sure haven't figured out what their priority is because I don't think they've spent enough time together to really say, okay, look, we know everybody can do whatever they need to do at whatever given time. Go get a bucket, this, that, and the third. But the Aces defense is so good. We need to yeah. have a hierarchy here. And I don't yeah. think they've really established that. Nope. I still – even even though we know yeah. Stewie was the MVP, even though we know like they still haven't established it. And that's right. part of the problem. And you have to do that before you start taking these, you know, freaking <laughs> I don't even know, Mike Tyson hits to the face. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Because there's no way you're thinking clearly in mm -hmm. that time. That has to be muscle memory. It has to be a given. But then also, arguably, that has to come from the coach. Yeah. And here's the thing. Sandy Brondello, I think, could have probably used her timeouts a little bit sooner. But it goes back to what you said and what we were talking about on social media and even before we started recording. If you're a player, I haven't played basketball competitively in years. But the one thing I knew is whether it's that you don't think you're getting calls if it's that you're tired of getting cooked, if it's that you're just tired, <laughs> what do you do? You foul. You got to. You've got to. You have to. We, we talked about you have to break up the Vegas Aces rhythm. You have to. Otherwise, it's just a tidal wave that's just going to keep on coming. It's going to keep coming. You have to find a way. And I think half of the half of the battle is finding ways to foul and take fouls on defense. But the other half of it, we talked about it pre-show, is you got to find a way to get to the free oh, throw line. Yeah. And, of course, that has you bring the officials into it. That's a whole other subjective variable. Okay, we know. Right. We know the officiating has not been the greatest. But, look, at some point, you have to – and I'm not talking about Sabrina. I'm talking about Laney. I'm talking about Stewie. And I'm talking about J.J. OK, they've got to get to the line specifically. You have to go yeah, inside out the line. And why? There's so many reasons why. Number one, the midi ain't there. If not mid range and beyond. Forget about it. Mm -hmm. If your name ain't Marine Johannes, don't even don't even look like you fit to take that damn shot. <laughs> I, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. Yeah, because it ain't it ain't there. And I, I need that's another thing. I need you to realize that it's not there. That's mm -hmm. two in a row. It's not there. Yeah, two and a, but that's the important part too, right? You have to shoot them at first to know if they're going down, right? And then if they're not going down, then you gotta gotta snap pull back. And, make and so similarly to, I feel like this has to be. If I know it as a as a former player, it has to be basics because I ain't, I ain't do all that for that long. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ain't do all that for that long, and I wasn't even particularly good, but I stuck to my basics. Yeah, and you knew because the fundamentals, man. I stuck to my dang basics. I hit that baseline because no one was outworking me. I was because I wasn't gonna beat anyone with the skill. I'm just keeping it real. But you would not outwork me, mm -hmm. and that Liberty are getting outworked. Mm -hmm. They're being Absolutely. outsmarted. They're not thinking again. They took a Mike Tyson hit to the face. <laughs> Layla Ali, bang, uppercut, and they're seeing stars. They're seeing yeah. stars. They might not admit it, but it's not hard to imagine that they are disrupted shall we say yeah by yeah. what the aces are doing and you know what that's sports that's gonna happen sometimes you're gonna works. get your butt beat becky hammond said it earlier when when the aces were in at barclays that was a old good old-fashioned ass whooping mm -hmm. yeah. it happens yeah and it's a series you don't want it you don't want to be down 0-2, but if it was if 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 they were going to win after winning two games, then they would already have the championship. Bottles popped, everything. Exactly. So yeah. you, you have, have to, to make play them like mm -hmm. 
we have nothing to lose with our home crowd who's gonna go bananas it's like you wanted to whack ellie i don't even know what ellie was gonna come the elephant stomp they might really call barnum and bailey's because the elephant stomp is about to be crazy here you go (laughs) not barnum and bailey but yes, ring, 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 ringling, because they about to stump. Yeah. You don't listen. And here's another thing that cannot go overlooked. And I feel like I kind of got to it. And Brian got a little, he got a little Brooklyn on the last podcast too. When you play for a New York team, and I've said this before on other podcasts, I've written about this. When you play for a New York team, I don't care what sport. I don't care what sport. You play for a New York team, there's an expectation from New Yorkers that you're going to play a certain way. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they ain't been doing that. They haven't. There's a there's a grittiness that's missing. Um, but to go back to what you were talking about, especially with Kayla Thornton, I think there's a grittiness that you can pull from her. Yes. Um, energy that she consistently plays. She played yeah. with that energy. Every time Kayla Thornton's up in the game, it's at least one tweet on Twitter. Wow. How haven't we? T- why haven't we talked about Thornton as a dirty player? And look. I'm not going to say sit here and say I think she's a dirty player. I think she plays physical, and I think she uses what she has. And I Correct. think I respect that. Um, Absolutely. There have, been, there have been moments, you know, where her and a bunch of other players have kind of tiptoed that line. Again, it's sports. This is basketball. It's, it's sports. physical sport. Again. Um, but I think you can pull some yes. of that grittiness from her. And then to go back to what you were talking about with the fouls and taking fouls, the more Sandy goes to her bench, the more they can afford to use those. You know Hello. what I'm saying? Come the more on. you can, KT's not going to use all her fouls. No, there's not. I don't see a situation where she fouls out. Like there's then, no. Way. Well, you know, come on, Sabrina and Courtney, you've been sitting on the bench. You can't. You can't now step up. Because mm-hmm. KT did you a solid. I'm gonna need you to step up. I'm with you. I'm mm-hmm. with you there. But I want to. I'm sorry. I cut you off. Continue. Continue. No, that was it. That's all. Okay. I was okay. That, because that's what they're missing. They miss that grit. They do. They missing the grit. You're absolutely right. We've talked about that throughout the whole season, and you already know how I feel about dirty players. If we're not putting Diana Taurasi at the top of that list, and I have no 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 shade, no tea, no shade, just no true. tea, no shade. That's straight up facts. Mm-hmm. Diana Taurasi, would I say she's a dirty player? I personally would not say that. Has she done some dirty things? Absolutely, freaking lutely Those are two different things, number one. But if you want to talk about anyone who deserves a quote-unquote dirty player stamp of approval, you got at least two people in Phoenix that are going to get that way before Kayla Thornton. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I digress. Anyway, so I love what you said about drawing the fouls. I just want to come back to that, and then we're going to go to bench because I think this there's an important point that we talked about offline that I want to make sure we have for the podcast. Drawing fouls. Why else do you want to draw fouls and get to the foul line? Again, midi ain't there. Perimeter shot ain't there. So not only do you potentially get the aces, and this is what the Liberty, for me, they didn't do. Again, how much of this is Sandy Brondello pushing the right buttons, which absolutely she needs to do. But at the same time, you can only coach so much. If you have players who are playing in the WNBA finals that don't know that if my shot isn't there, that maybe I should put the damn ball on the floor and drive to the hole and try to pop someone's rib out. (laughs) <laughs> and hope that the foul goes in my direction. Like, if you don't know that and you're playing for a WNBA finals, like, you want me to waste a time out to tell you that? Exactly. We're not children, and this is not college basketball anymore. You this want is, me yeah. to waste a time out on the road to tell you that. We're not doing that. Mm-hmm. And then also, what were y'all doing during halftime to wear whatever Sandy said or didn't say, I really don't know, because I'm not saying, I mean, I would lean towards Sandy had some words, but were y'all listening? Because y'all got hit again. They opened, they bandaged you up, <laughs> put the ice pack, trying to bring the eye swelling so you could see out of both eyes. They popped you back crew, open. <laughs> the whole crew, they resuscitated you. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then you came out and you got your lip cut again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. How? Ugly. How? Ugly, ugly. Not not driving to the hoop. I do think Sabrina did this for a stretch, and the points that she did get, that's because she did start. You know, I, I listen, I know not everyone will like this, but there were times even where I saw her bringing the ball down, and I was like, yo, stop. Hit the brakes right now. There's someone, an Aces player trailing you. Hit the brakes. Go into the front row. 
I don't give a damn. Sometimes yeah. you got to play that way because you need us. You need to get a, a scoring opportunity. You Absolutely. cannot waste another possession. And at the end of the day, whether we like it or not, and we've all got caught on the on the receiving end of this. But if that player stops and you're not looking and you run them over, that's a foul. It's going to be. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You just got to be smart about it, man. You got to be smart about it. You have to. Come it, on. It's what the great point guards do. You know, it's what the great point guards do. Come on. You want to mm-hmm. do it when you're shooting. You don't have to wait till you're shooting to do that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to need you to know that. Sandy can't be calling timeouts to tell y'all that. Yeah. And, and the thing about Sabrina specifically, she does it fantastic when she's <laughs> when she's underneath the, or under the three-point line and she, she stops and time. gets that and foul. She's, she's good, at good it. for that. We're, yeah. we're, come on. We got to know that. Mm-hmm. And poor John Quill Jones because – they don't even the aces don't have to worry about being physical with anybody else. And so JJ's getting it all. Yeah. And JJ hit the deck a few times. No, and no flop, in my opinion. She, Cause you know, there was contact. Yeah. There was contact. Yeah. She's getting if you and this is another thing fundamentally, I would like to see JJ work on. She's gotta keep the ball up. Oh my god. JJ always brings the ball down and the Aces obviously know that because they will have the smallest peskiest player like it's like she's w- waving off gnats. They will have the smallest peskiest player which is usually Kelsey Plum. Er, plum dog. <laughs> Scrappy little dog clicking at her heels. JJ you got to keep that ball up. I'm talking like literally keep keep that thing like you because your wingspan gotta be like eight feet you know what i'm saying like how many jump balls did we see between her and kelsey palm yesterday like just you gotta keep she's gotta keep that ball up so again fundamentals y'all like (laughs) they could call me because i I got thoughts about fundamentals but now this is where i want to put the the ball on the court, so to speak, for sandy brondello because from a coaching perspective i do think there are things that absolutely have to happen for game three, absolutely have to happen. But I wanted to get your thoughts. Um, and and so you you mentioned getting Marine in, getting uh, uh, KT in early, getting them into those rotations. Because we're at this point, I don't think the coaching staff can realistically bank on Sloot and Sabs going off. Hey, WNBA fans, Erica L. Ayala here, and I am pleased to announce something very special. Given that a few members of the Gotta Get Up podcast are planning to cover the WNBA finals, we thought this would be a great time to roll out Gotta Get Up Overtime. Now, this is going to be a special Patreon-only podcast by joining up on our Patreon page as part of Black Rosie Media, you will get a direct link um, to our audio podcast. This will be an addition to our free podcast. It will include things like exclusive interviews with players, especially when we're at games. It's gonna include um, some of our behind the scenes stuff when we're covering the WNBA finals, when we're at games, it will have some of our player interviews that maybe just don't make the podcast or that we're not using in articles elsewhere. So this is a great time to sign up for got to get up overtime. And also if you don't want to subscribe to our Patreon, which we highly recommend, we also going to have a newsletter coming in the off season, then We would love if you would consider making a little tip to Gotta Get Up. If you've been finding our content useful, we, again, are going to have, we're expected to have two of our regular participants, Brian and Erica, that would be me, um, traveling for the WNBA finals. And right now, this is a labor of love, and we're looking to get ways to monetize the show and to expand our WNBA coverage. So if you're available, we have, again, the Patreon option, got to get up over time, and it's going to be an overdrive for the WNBA finals. But you can also um, make a, a little tip, you know, air quote tip, just donate anything that you can using Venmo or PayPal, and we would greatly appreciate it. But we are so excited to have some of our crew between myself, Misha, and Brian, we do have another episode. It's going to be in two parts coming to you soon. Um, And then I will be in Vegas for game one and we'll keep up with you on Gotta Get Up 
gotta get up over time and of course on black rosie social media for everything else but thank you so much for listening or watching on youtube and we hope that for those who are able that you support us beyond what you're doing right now thanks so much Agreed. and questionable with laney if we're keeping it a buck yeah it's gotta be it's gotta be a plus you know what i mean at this point at this point gotta it, find and consistency crazy. and let them going off be oh that's extra cherry on top that we correct yeah. but you're not getting those get to the line rotations so here's a substitution or someone whose minutes i'm curious if you think we should see more of and this is stephanie dolson now steph dolson yeah that i mean <laughs> i have never I been was loud i <laughs> because i'm trying to i feel like if you know you know yeah. steph dolson yeah. Steph Dolson. Man. Steph Dolson. I mean, that's really, that's, I don't, I feel like, okay, end of podcast, like, cause y'all know what I'm talking about. No, but what I, to translate, <laughs> to translate, I will try to translate myself now. Steph Dolson, solid. I use the word when we we're off air, serviceable, right? Mm -hmm. You get what you get with Steph. You have a veteran who's been to a WNBA finals and has also played in heartbreaking playoff games for Chicago yeah. one with them can set a screen like a mug and you know what sometimes she's gonna get that call fouled on her but you know what else someone's gonna be on the ground mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> the yeah. aces I think I said this on social the Liberty have not made the aces feel them yeah they've been it, physical but the aces have out physical them still so. They're not making them. So Steph Dolson brings a physicality. She can set a screen like not very many in the in in the league. That's facts. Facts yeah. on facts. She is not the greatest shot, but you know what? She you can. can that you wanna you wanna <laughs> if the mid range is missing, you have someone who can hit a mid range on your bench. Mm -hmm. And you know what else gives me more confidence that she maybe will hit that more often with more efficiency, because the efficiency is in the trash for the New York Liberty right now. It is trash. But Steph Dolson has height yeah. more than more than KT, more than B. And so even if she doesn't get a clean look, she can shoot over a decent amount of Aces players. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing about her is I don't think she would, sometimes when you when you think about making adjustments in your rotations, you also have to account for the fact that and this also shows we should be giving all the props to Marie and Johannes. But some Johannes, excuse me, when you come off the bench, sometimes it's not automatic. Sometimes you need a little bit of time to really ease into it. And me, if I'm Sandy Brondella, I feel confident that when I put Steph Dolson out there, she'll get straight to it. And this is even somebody that we're talking about who spent a, a good solid amount of the season dealing with injury and trying to come back from that. And I'm still confident that when you put her in the game, she'll do what Steph Dolson can do, like you just talked yeah. about. Um, yeah. And the other thing about it is when you put her in the game, She's one of the people that the Aces will sag off of. You know what I mean? She's one of the people that they will gam gamble on like Candy, like Courtney Vandersloot and say, look, go ahead and shoot it. And if you can get Steph Dolson going, if you can if you can even run something for her to intentionally get her a shot and get her involved in the offense, I mean, who knows where it can go? But we talked about it pre-show. This is throw the kitchen sink at them time. You down 2-0. Do. You got Listen. one more game guaranteed. Listen. Mm -hmm. Listen. Put, put Dolson on the wing. <laughs> Let her bring the ball up. No, <laughs> put, put her on the wing. Let her bring the ball up. Listen, because you know what else Steph Dolson going to do? She going to move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She will move yeah. on offense because that's her job. Her job is to move on offense to make space for her teammates. Whether she's setting a pick or not, that is her job. And she has the size to do that. And not she's not gonna get punked out here. Yeah. Let's keep it funky. MJ be getting punked. That's why I said what I said on the last episode. You know, if this were volleyball, yo, she'd be coming off that court every time on defense. Yeah. Every time. She's a liability in this in similar ways that Sabrina is. Um, and you know, credit to there's been all sorts of people on Twitter saying this exact same thing all season, but in particular, I know Loa's been saying it all season. Um, but 
what can you do? Like, there's two sides of the ball. Um, and that's for Sabrina and for MJ. If you can't defend anybody, you, you're you still neutralized. Yeah, okay, we might feel like we have a little bit more rhythm on offense when you're in the game, but it doesn't matter if the Aces are still jamming it at us and, and coming at us full speed. It, You know, we're, we're back to square one just with different personnel. Um, but back against what you were saying about Steph Dolson, the other part about her, um, not only is she going to be left open, by the aces on rotations if she's in that game but what lineup do we know the aces love to go to their best lineup that one with ac in it right with alicia clark if you got dolson in the game as soon if you if you time that up and you bring her in when they bring ac and you've got to you know what i mean you're you're creating mismatches and that's what sandy rondella have, to, do have it. to find ways to do yeah have to because they're not if they're not going to stop the ball by driving and get in drawing fouls mm -hmm. if they're not going to stop the ball by fouling then you have to get stops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because and I credit to Lobo who mentioned this, but on on the broadcast, but also it's very obvious that transition, we knew transition and pace, transition and pace. We always talk about that with these two teams. But when the aces are in transition and have pace, they take they neutralize John Quell Jones on one at least one side of the ball, mm -hmm. if not both. Yeah. And if John Quell Jones is doing everything under the mother loving son to find rebounds on the offensive side, and then y'all are taking mid to perimeter shots that are banking out to Timbuktu, there's only so much JJ can do. She only got she she can only cover so much ground, man. At some point, there's only so much she can do. Yeah. So if y'all are not gonna get aggressive and get O boards, then that means the aces are in transition, and that also means you don't have JJ's size, and she's not. Stewie has some speed on JJ. I'll just put it that way. So if Stewie's not blocking shots, then you you're not swatting on tra in transition. You're yeah. not. You're not doing it. It's not happening. But like, there's just so many things, and I love it. Kitchen sink. I'll put another name out there. Um, you know, Jocelyn Willoughby. Yeah, she look them the minutes she got at the end of the game last night. Her and uh, was it Kayla George got tied up? I'm like, yeah, that's what y'all need. That's what New York needs. It's 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 not even about. And sometimes there are players. I I was one of these players in college. My freshman year, you put me in the game just to rough some stuff up, or you know, piss somebody off, take a charge, something that'll that you know, part. You have to play all sides of this game, and part of it is that mental game. And she can't. She went in and and was not. You know, she yeah, didn't exactly score 10 points in the three minutes she played in the fourth quarter. But, you know, she wasn't afraid. And that's, you know, more than I can say for a lot of people right now. Hello. I, I just, for me, that's what's most heartening. Sometimes you're going to get your butt beat. Yeah. It's just going to happen. But getting your butt beat. And there was a time where Courtney Vandersloot, MJ subbed in for her. Maybe it was the second or third period I can't remember but a little bit later in the game and instead of you know usually you go to your teammate or at least you get close enough so you could give a little tap it's not required and sometimes I guess it's not let me put it this way it's not like soccer where sometimes it makes sense to just exit the pitch wherever you are mm -hmm. in basketball it is not only common practice but it is well within reason that you are able to go tap up your teammate and then just walk off the court yep. she took the beeline <laughs> straight to the court and then you even see people i think it was steph and other people just reaching out because again that's a basketball thing yeah when you're not able to do that that shows me a player that's very frustrated yeah that is dejected that is overwhelmed at the situation and those are hard words to use for a vet but i'm just calling it like i see it it hurt to see yeah and i understand why you might feel that way but if we're keeping it a buck She's not one of the players that the Liberty can afford to be feeling and looking that way. Yeah. That's not yeah. why she was brought here. Is it fair? Guy, man? You're, you <laughs> might not be – because this this team's makeup and, and this – that actually just reminded me of another point I want to make after this. But when you're looking at this team's makeup, I said at the beginning of the year, they need somebody who does this. We, a lot of coaches talk about five fingers. They don't, don't hit as hard as a fist does. Courtney Vandersloot is the glue. Right. We've said a lot of different players are the glue in different situations. But what I'm talking about specifically is she's the point guard. She's the Correct. vet. He has the championship experience at that specific position. And when you have There's so many players on this on this roster who can do so many different things, when you don't have a traditional one, traditional two, traditional three, four five kind of setup, 
you need somebody who can read the floor and who can be composed in those moments. But if Sloot doesn't feel like she can be that person, that is a huge, huge, huge blow for the Liberty. Because who Correct. else can do that? Who else and can that, organize them in that way? Again, and it, you're right. And again, that's where it goes back to whether it's what I was saying with Tuckman's model. We we're basically saying the same thing. And what you were saying regarding whose team is this? Um, I mean, basically, you and I have we went all of last episode was us going back and forth on like whose team is this? Mm -hmm. How much does it matter? It matters because my gut will always tell me that that shit matters. That's why I don't like this positionless basketball. I was like, you can be positionless two through five. You need a floor general. Yes. Period. Yes. Period. And that floor general, maybe I think it makes sense for them to play the one, but maybe they don't because we've seen Stewie bring the ball up. But even Stewie has not leaned in fully, which has been surprising to me. So the only thing I can think, knowing Stewie's pedigree, um, the only thing I can think is either the, the Liberty have been clear on who their go-to is, and it's not Stewie, because Stewie's going to play her role, um, or for whatever reason, you know, Stewie's just not feeling that, that she has it. Now, that's something else you got to be real about. We yeah. talked about this with Sab, but you got to be real with your teammates, if you don't Listen, got it, you don't got it. I ain't got it. And you yeah. know what? It's no no shade, no tea, no matter what the so what social media wants to say. No shade, no tea. And we talked about this, right, when we talked about CP3. Mm -hmm. Obviously, she's dealing with an injury. But if we remove the injury away and we go back to that conversation, what were we saying? If you don't have CP3 at 100% is whatever she has is 100% of her 2%, of her 5%, of her 25%. Do you want that? Mm -hmm. Is that better than a than a uh you know Kayla George's hundred percent? Is that better than a Kirsten Bell's one hundred percent? Like, you know, um, yeah, you got to do that same math on the Liberty side. Exactly, and the thing that the Liberty should have the advantage to is that again, Sandy Brondello has been folding in other players. So in theory, like I said. I think it's first has to be Steph Dolson. I think her minutes need to go up on the immediate. And then you also need to find time for uh, Jocelyn Willoughby. Because like you said, both of those players give you grit. Mm -hmm. Both of those players are going to do their job. Damn everything else that's happening. Yeah. And the other thing that they do is they take away from the uncertainty on the offensive end. Because both of them know that they are role players and will go in there and act accordingly. And that's no tea, no shade again also because role players are the lifeblood this of basketball right. teams. Okay. You heard this me say right. it, um, but they'll come in and say it's Willoughby, Dolson. Um, I don't know. Let's throw Marine in there. Let's throw, uh, I don't know, JJ and Laney. Like, I'm going to Laney and I'm going to JJ. It's not, you know what I mean? It's, there's no question. There's no because question the about role, it. Everyone knows what role. And that's the issue right now with the starting lineup is that the roles for this series are not defined. They're just because wondering who's going to step up each night and you can't. You just, because I don't know, you know, I've really been trying not to say this. Let me just, I'm going to throw out multiple scenarios for why you're starting five wouldn't know their role. It wasn't defined. They don't have 100% and they haven't communicated that they're not at 100%. Now, was that mentally? Is that emotionally? Is it physically? There are a lot of ways that you cannot show up as your 100%. I mean, we all have it as humans. Yeah, man. Yeah, absolutely. And that, you know, the thing is that they have a high pressure job where it is expected whether it's fair or not because some of what we were saying about Sloot is it quote unquote fair no because other people should be handling their mess too what like at what point do you have to say look it's no longer up to you that's that's yep and, yep. and this is something actually I I, I want to ask you this because I'm actually really interested to see you know your thoughts on this after seeing game two and the way this series has gone mm -hmm. do you think it would be smart for Jonathan Kolb and the Liberty to continue down this. Eventually we're going to give Sabrina the keys path. Do you like, is that still what you're seeing or are you seeing something else now? Yeah. It's interesting that you asked this question because someone on black Rosie media, YouTube was like after the season, regardless what happens, trade Sabrina and Escu trade. Uh, wow. That's a, yeah, <laughs> we're going like, listen, I was like, okay, well, you, you, you in New York now. Um, <laughs> For me, 
Yes, the vision is still there. Because this is what, and I wrote this down to make sure I made a point to say this explicitly. And you said it earlier, Misha. It is hard to make a WNBA final. It's hard to make the playoffs. It's harder to make the finals. It is even harder to win. And it is the most difficult thing in sports to defend a title. The New York Liberty, I don't think that they don't know any of that. Brianna Stewart knows that. Courtney Vandersloot knows that. John Cole Jones she knows, that. knows that. And she's having another year where she's playing out of her mind and could be in, you know, in 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 a bubble. Her performance is good enough to be considered for an a finals MVP, except for. There's nothing very great about what we're seeing from the New York Liberty. And and there are multiple players on the aces, like the entire starting five, the core four. We're going to add Kia in there because whole girl did her thing. We could, go ahead and add Kia in there. Listen, I can tell you, and we talked about what I heard in game one, and unless – Unless I could be a little fly on the wall, I don't know exactly what buttons Sandy is pushing, what things the players are saying to Sandy as just far as far as, again, if you ain't got it, you ain't got it mentally, physically, emotionally, you might need to talk to your coach about that and have a real conversation. I don't know if those things are happening, but it's just hard for me to believe that there's not something completely off kilter right now with the New York Liberty squad. Mm -hmm. And maybe they're like, Listen, yeah, we see it ain't we see it ain't really what it's supposed to be, but we're not panicking. But I don't think we're at a point where they're not panicking. I really don't. I think Courtney Vandersloot is feeling a little bit tight. S Brianna Stewart's been looking tight throughout the playoffs because she's she looks like she's treading water. Like last game, she got fourteen and thirteen, and it looked like again she had to fight and claw just to get. It was hard. Birth. It was hard. It was yeah. hard. and Extremely hard. Yeah, you're asking a lot from her on both ends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to say that the vision is after one time through is not there, I don't, I don't think that the expectation should have been that the New York Liberty were going to walk away with this. Mm -hmm. You drew the aces. Mm-hmm. And you think you're entitled to a, a freaking championship because you made it to the finals for the first time in 20 years? Yeah. If anything, that is the chip on my damn shoulder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think I think also th the thing that's getting caught up in the mix is, to me, yeah, again, okay, look at the personnel on the Liberty. You expect certain things, whatever, whatever. This is a feat. How many teams make it to the finals? Just the two. Just the two. Look at the road. I, I, I don't want to lose sight because they're getting thraxed in this series. Let's not lose sight of the way they had to beat the Mystics, the Come way on. they had to beat the Sun. That, Come to on. me, are signs of absolutely that's progress because who stepped up in those moments? Yeah, okay, they might be faltering now that they're at, you know, the, the pinnacle, the real pinnacle of they're it all. They're tired. But it has been a knockdown drag. Look at the path the Aces have taken to the finals. You know, they, they ran through, I mean, they We're ran different. through the first and second round. So, you know, I still think, again, continuing to contextualize this entire series, I think this is a win for the Liberty. Um, I think this is a win for the franchise. But going back to what I asked you about Sabrina, I said last game, Sandy had to challenge her in game two. Yep. I think, you know, not to go too far into the future, but this offseason, it's do it or don't. Oh, for it's, sure. You have Either to. Way. You have to be a better defender. We have to Absolutely. be able to put you in front of anybody who plays your position in the WNBA. And if we cannot do that, we gonna have problems. You know what I'm saying? You have to come up with yep. with you know one on one offense um, outside Correct. of what's already been shown to everybody on film. Because what's in your bag right now? Everybody already jocked. Everybody already know what you have. You have to add some things to that. That's bag. real. It, it's That's not real. just about stepping back from the three point line anymore. You know. That is very, very real. And I'm here for it. I feel like I've been giving Sabrina the benefit of the doubt because I know she can do that. Mm -hmm. I should, well, I mean, I guess I don't know who knows what anyone knows or what, like you said, once that ball is in your hand, nobody knows mm -hmm. defense or don't. You just yeah. gotta, you gotta rock with it. But I have faith, right? From what we've seen, even this season, 
that mm-hmm. she can do that. Because why she stepped up. All throughout this season, there's moments where she has stepped up. So and yeah. again, that's why I even talked about the little things about her taking pride in getting a stop mm-hmm. and forcing her mark the other way. That's not something that she does every time out, but the the emphasis that she placed on that one play that I saw to me stood out as something that she knows she has to work on. And it just, for me, everything with the Liberty this year is about time. You gotta, so, get, in the, you gotta get in the trenches and do it anyway. You gotta, you be, gotta do it. Yeah. And this is someone who I don't think it's just talk. I, I think she does embrace practice. That's how she was able to beat a record in the, the three point contest. Mm-hmm. What does that look like though for her? And I kind of talked about it before the series started. This is an opportunity for Sabrina Ionescu to step up in a moment that she quite honestly has never had in her career. Yep. My my other question we do have another game to play. And I know, I know I've, I've pushed us to the future to think about, you know, what do we do with Sab? What does her future look like? All that kind of stuff. But there's still another game to play. Yeah. So from, from your perspective, what are you expecting to see from the Liberty? Wow. What I'm expecting yeah. <laughs> or yeah. what I want to see? Cause those. Let's Michael's go with what you want to see. What are you hopeful right. to see? Yes. What are you hopeful? Right. So here we go. If I'm Sandy Brandello or literally any, if, like if they call me as me to go in that locker room, this is what I would tell them. I'm going to tell you straight up what I would say, but listen, we in a bad spot. We in a bad spot. Let's keep it a buck. We don't have to, you know, lollygag and pussyfoot around it. We in a bad spot. And Like I said earlier on the podcast, if that was all it took to win a championship, then we wouldn't be here for game three. They would have already given out the trophy and it would have been a wrap, tap, tap. We'd be doing exit interviews. So now, 40 minutes to keep the season alive. What are you going to do about that? What are you going to do about the fact that you have 40 minutes in front of your home fans to extend the season? That's all we're worried about, playing game four on our court again. So if you want to see me here for game four, what are you going to do? Tell me right now. Think about it. But before we leave this locker room, I'm going to need everyone to vocalize what you are going to do, what you are going to absolutely master. I need 50-50 balls from everybody. I need y'all boxing out from everybody. And then you let people cook in the places that they said, you know, that's what I I would have some kind of version of that conversation. What are you bringing to the cookout? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you said you was bringing potato salad. So I didn't make potato salad. You can't come empty handed either. Yeah. You can't come empty handed. Yeah. That, I mean, it's, it's, they have to go back to basics. Um, And I think the only big thing I would add is I'm talking specifically to the bench. I'm talking Ooh. to Jocelyn. I'm talking to Dolson. I'm talking to Marine. I'm, ta- I'm talking to everybody who's coming off the bench because the thing about it is the Aces have the Liberty scouted. You know what I mean? They've scouted the shit out of them. Um, and it's obvious in their defenses. It's obvious. Like, they look excellent on that side of the ball. And one thing that I think um, goes underappreciated sometimes in basketball, some of the best the, the grittiest, the ugliest for people who love, you know, execution, but some of the ugliest, but m- most uh, rewarding wins for a team in the Liberty's position come from chaos. And what I mean by that is yep. in a situation where you don't actually know who's going to hurt you tonight. And for Kayla Thornton, for Dolson, for Marine, um, and for Jocelyn Willoughby, this is your chance. Show us what you yeah. really got. Show us you can oh, score the ball. Really Show us you can make play. Yeah. Like, don't go outside of yourself. But when you have yeah. the opportunity, you need go to take it. advantage of it and you need to execute it. Yep. I'm adding that. And then I'm adding um, specifically anytime there is a mismatch. Ooh. Attack. Anytime there attack. is a mismatch on the offensive side of the ball, there can be attack. zero hesitation. The Aces okay. do a great job of rotating, of talking, and getting back to, uh, to cross matches that suit them. You cannot let that happen. You have to immediately recognize and attack and execute. Um, you might miss layups. You might the aces play with pace. We know that. You're gonna have to shoot eventually. So why not take those shots? Why not take those mismatch shots and stop being so damn unselfish? 
Mm. I think that's one of the things that pissed me off last night. I watched. Oh, I, I was I was like, Laney, Laney is a key for them. She's always been a key for them on the offensive side of the ball. Her being aggressive and attacking is key for them on the offensive side of the ball. Yep. She caught the ball on the left wing, drove to the nail, and had a layup. But instead of taking that layup, she decided to kick it off to JJ. You can't do that anymore. It's the same thing. Not to make it about the Mystics. <laughs> it's the same thing the Mystics did, man. You get stagnant. And I don't think the Liberty have the slashers that the Mystics have, but you got you to gotta do something. You yeah. have to get high percentage shots. And you know that you're not hitting the ball from the – you're not hitting the shots from the mid-range. You know you're not hitting it from the three. So what else is left? You know, keep it gotta simple. Go. Kiss, keep gotta it go. simple, stupid. Like, That's please. True. No. Listen. We're not stupid, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Silly, silly, silly. <laughs> don't hit the same. <laughs> Keep it simple, silly. Nah, I don't <laughs> silly. Oh my goodness. Um, no, I love that. I love what you're saying about the bench, and I think this is how you say it like, you're on this team for a reason. Yes, absolutely. And your reason, your time is now. Yeah, we need you. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's all. But predictions? <laughs> listen, 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 listen. I said aces and four, so that means the Liberty have to win. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't even remember what I said. Did I say I might have agreed with you and said aces and four? Um, but it's giving very much aces and three in my head. My heart says four. My heart says four. Listen, but. listen, you know what? I feel like maybe this is honestly what I would say, because this is how I feel right now. If I'm being honest, this is how I feel. The Aces, they might win. They might win next game. They might win game three. Maybe we win game three. Maybe, you know, maybe we win game four. Maybe we win game five. Anything can happen. What cannot happen is that we leave this court tonight and we didn't give it all we got mm -hmm. what, what are you gonna live with yeah you're not we're not entitled to this trophy we gotta earn it and that has to we are in a position where there are no options there's not there's not a wait we have to earn it and it starts tonight the only way we earn the right to win this championship is if we win tonight's game yeah it's really that simple. Everything else has been taken out of the equation. I, I mean, I can't speak for other places because I ain't never been from nowhere else. When it comes to teams that I root for in New York, like, it's a real thing. You have to represent. Like, when you say, I put on for myself, like, that's a real thing. Mm -hmm. That's, that's why so many Knicks players got booed. It, that, look, come to, come to New York and try to be half-assed. And listen, not gonna go I can't it. speak for the crowd. I don't think, generally speaking, this is like a boo situation because it's the freaking finals. You know what I'm saying? But we not we not clapping and cheering for bullshit. Facts. We gotta put up a fight. Gotta put up a fight. Got That's to. It. Gotta put up a fight. Got to, because the aces are going to. They've already done so. They've already punked you twice. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So that's what I want. You talking about what I want? I want them to show up and I want them to play like they are the honorary New Yorkers that they are. Because I, I can guarantee if there were some people from, from around that way, if we could hit the court, listen, we might, we might, you know, we <laughs> might not do much, but we what we do, we gonna do. <laughs> and that's all we asking for y'all to do. Shoot, man. Yeah, <laughs> just represent New York well. Represent the team well rep the franchise well and you know um yeah i don't know i just want to see i just that's all i ever care about i just want to see better games as always thank you for listening to gotta get up a podcast for new york liberty fans and listen we're always going to keep it 100 new york liberty fans but it's the same that i said for the players don't regret don't regret no regrets no rug <laughs> Listen, Ooh. don't 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 give up on your squad now. Yeah. 10 toes down. Let's go. And then it's all the sweeter for the for those of y'all who call Liberty and Five. Come on, let's go. Let's go. 
don't give up on them now. It's going to hurt like hell, but it might hurt a little more if you stop believing. So that's what I got to say about that. Thank you, as always, for joining us on Black Rosie Media. Of course, this is, just in case y'all didn't know, a podcast <laughs> for New York Liberty fans. So we're going we gonna to make sure the New York Liberty fans are all right before we cut out. But Misha Jones, thank you for joining me, Erica L. Ayala. That's me right here. Um, and Brian and I will be back at some point. We'll be in Brooklyn getting you ready for game three. So stay tuned on Black Rosie Media. Until then, though, peace out, everybody. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>